We are here to discuss a replacement for our recently dearly departed. Since the signs point to this being a favorable time for discovery, our patience is about to be rewarded. The forces at this very moment are bringing us the successor to our dearly beloved Marie. Nothing must be allowed to interfere with the process. Whatever the cost, we must isolate her from the beginning. Concentrate now. Concentrate. Let our energies drain inwardly toward the divine spark we have prayed to be kindled in our midst. Good afternoon. May I help you? I have a reservation. Whitman. Gary Whitman. Mr. Mrs. Hmm. Yes. That sounds familiar. Let me find your card. Well, that's strange. I must have misplaced it. It should be here. I don't understand. You sure it's not there? My secretary made the reservation no oh, a month ago. It was confirmed in the mail. Ah, well, we are in luck. 
It was misfiled. I knew it was here somewhere. <laughs> I'm Mr. Charbonnet. I trust you will enjoy your visit. The Georgian room, Chad. Yes, sir. Right this way, please. We serve a continental breakfast, either in your room or in the courtyard, if you like. Oh, I thought I'd fix that door. As soon as you leave, I'll take care of it, and you won't even know I was here. Enjoy your stay in New Orleans. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, uh, by the way, would you bring up a bottle of good champagne before we uh, get back this evening? Yes, sir. Thank you. What a lovely day. I wish we still traveled like this. I can almost imagine we're living in the past without a care in the world. Mm. I'm really glad we came here. Well, it uh, would certainly be Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, look at that house there. It's beautiful. Easy. Easy, girl. Easy. Easy. She'll be all right. She always get nervous when she ride around Congo Square. She hear the drums, I think. <laughs> She's got better hearing than I have. What drums? The ones they dance to. Sometimes you can hear the singing and chanting at night. Voodoo chanting? That's right, lady. How'd you know that? Mm, must have... Read it in a guidebook. It's the spells they always cast. Trying to drive folks out of their minds with their chanting and their magic. That old voodoo queen, she's still around, they say. I can't seem to find my perfume anywhere. I know I packed well, it. Well, it's no trouble. I'm I sure there's a perfume in my purse. something in the neighborhood. Pardon my intrusion, Mrs. Whitman, but just two doors from here is one of the best perfumeries in the world. They create their own special scents right on the premises. You may use my name if you like. Thank you. I will. Found any you like? This one, I think. He was right. We're staying at Mr. Charbonnet's hotel. He sent us here. Oh, did he? Uh-huh. What do you think, darling? I don't know. They're all the same to me. Asthma. <laughs> You've made a good choice. This will take a little while to make up, but we can deliver it to your hotel. Fine. That's your larger size? Oh, don't worry. This one is particularly intense. A little goes a long way. Mr. and Mrs. Whitman, your timing's perfect. 
I just brought you your champagne and the perfume. Oh, thank you. Feels great, first night in New Orleans. Can hardly wait to get to Bourbon Street. You sure you won't change your mind? Come with me tonight? Uh-uh. Okay, I'll be back early. But first, I uh, thought we'd have some champagne like old times. Lovely. To us. To us.
me, Gary. Gary. It's all right, I'm here. Bad dream? I'm not sure. What's the matter? I was wondering if I'd seen this courtyard before. Well, I'm glad you were able to join us. I trust you spent a pleasant evening. Yes, we did. I'm pleased. May I make a suggestion for today? There's a lovely little motor tour of the quarter that leaves here in just a few minutes. Well, I haven't cared much for tours. It'd be a lovely way to see the city. Well, I've never sent anyone on this tour who came back disappointed. <laughs> well, in that case, I guess you'd better give it a try. The French Quarter is famous for its exotic courtyards, and you will find one behind almost every one of these buildings we're passing. New Orleans has always been a superstitious town, and that's why some of the houses have a horseshoe over the door, or a holy picture, which is supposed to protect a person against evil spirits. Now, way back when, people here believed that a voodoo doll would help gain magic over an intended victim. It wasn't unusual for someone to find one of those dolls, made with their own hair and clothing, on their front stoop. That's why it's an old New Orleans tradition to sweep your front stoop every morning. Bet you're all wondering whether I believe in any of this silly stuff, the way I'm carrying on. Sort of a famous cemetery. Many well-known people have been buried here, but right here is probably the most famous tomb we have. Does anyone here speak French? The inscription reads, the widow Paris, born Laveau, lies here, as Marie Philome Glapion. This is the tomb of Marie Laveau, a free woman of color who was considered to be the queen of New Orleans voodoo. She made potions and perfumes for the society ladies of her time, and they swore by her power. Now then, a legend spread that Marie Laveau never really died, but stayed alive by capturing the souls of her daughters. First her own blood daughter, who took her mother's name in practice, and then later other daughters. Not of the flesh, but of the spirit. Some of you I see are noticing all the X's scratched on her tomb. They say that if you make a wish and mark an X by her name, she might grant you her favor. Damn. What happened? Mm. Broke my nail. Okay, let's not hang around here scratching X's on the grave. Let's get back to the bus. Our last stop will be Jackson Square, the heart of the quarter. Here you will find St. Louis Cathedral and other interesting buildings. But the real fun thing, I think, is the park, where all the artists come out on a fine day, like today, to show their work. Well, this ends our tour. Bye now, and thanks for visiting with us. Mary Ann! Mary Ann! How did you know my name? I heard your husband talking to you. We were wondering if maybe the two of you would like to have dinner with us. We thought we might try that restaurant Mr. Charbonnet recommended. What was the name of it? Was it Antoine's? Yeah, that's the one. Oh, that would be lovely. A little more wine? Oh, I'm dizzy enough already. With all these mirrors, I can understand why the African natives were so frightened by them. Frightened it snatched their souls away. <laughs> How fanciful. Have you ever been in a city so full of mirrors? No. <laughs> Even dreamed about them last night. I can see why. I wonder what my book of dreams says about mirrors. It's so frustrating. I have this book and I almost never dream. I haven't given it much of a chance to lately. Oh. <laughs> Do you remember what it says about looking in a mirror and seeing someone who isn't yourself? Who did you see? I don't know. She was very beautiful with dark skin. Oh, that's just the dark side of your nature looking back out at you. 
Wound up, that's all. I'm going to take you back to the hotel. No, it's all right. I'll be Look, all right. Look, I can listen to jazz anytime. I'll take Marianne back. You boys go on ahead and have fun. No hard feelings, Bob, but you know I can't stand that kind of music anyway. Come on, that'll be all right. I really like the quarter. I never again expect to stay in a place so grand. But I could see how it could affect you, especially late at night like this. But don't worry, because I'm going to stick real close to you for the rest of our stay. I won't stay but a minute. I know you're tired. Anything but. Oh, to make a scene like that in public. Well, it was just a spell. It could happen to anybody. Look at these now. Mmm, smell. Wouldn't old Bob freak out if he got a whiff of this stuff? You can take it. Oh, I couldn't. I want you to. What did you wish for at that old tomb anyway? What should anyone wish for? Everlasting happiness. See you in the morning. Don't forget, I'm right through that wall if you need me.
seems to have happened is that she got out of bed and didn't turn on the light. And in the dark, she stumbled over something and fell through the mirror. What a rotten, stupid way to die. should be ready in about an hour and a half at the most. Honey, let's check out of here. We don't have to go home. We can rent a car and drive down the coast if you like. May we get you anything else, Mrs. Whitman? You know, we all feel terrible. You can imagine what it's like for all of us when something as unforeseen as this happens. So many people are superstitious. Now, is there anything we can do to make your stay more comfortable? Change your room, perhaps? No, thank you. You'll notice that she's wearing a tignon to cover her hair. And that is a sign that this is a portrait of a free woman of color, one given her freedom by becoming the mistress of a man of wealth and stature. The respectable ladies of New Orleans managed to get a law passed which required such women to wear tignons. Now, her daughter, on the other hand, is not wearing a tignon because by the middle of the 1800s, the law was repealed. You'll notice that the daughter is wearing more jewelry than the mother, Another indication that the wealth and power of the mother has been passed along to the daughter. Some of that jewelry is Carl. There are many Renaissance portraits of the Christ child wearing Carl, and this was to protect him from the evil powers that penetrate the earth. Notice the long gold chain which surrounds her entire body forming a compositionally beautiful V. The locket is partially turned away, so you cannot see whether it holds a portrait or whether it contains something else, like a lock of hair, which would be both a good luck charm and a symbol of the continuation of her mother's power. Another sign that these are portraits of mother and daughter are the eyes. The highlighting emphasizes the very dark eyes. Since the artist wished to indicate the supernatural powers of this lady, he went out of his way to make the eyes penetrating. In the mother's portrait, though done by a different artist, the eyes are similar, and that is why we are sure that this is the daughter of Marie Laveau. 
Now, if you'll follow me to the Mardi Gras room, we'll take a look at some of the costumes of the period. The celebration of Mardi Gras in New Orleans has been an annual event for almost 150 years. Its true origin, however, the Bacchanalian festivity, can be traced back nearly 5,000 years to pagan times. Jesus. <laughs> Gosh, I'm sorry, mister. I didn't see you coming. That's okay. Just watch it next time. I'll be down in just a minute. Interesting study, isn't it? The Cambiosco. But you know, I could never decide whether the artist intended to be reverent or profane. Perhaps a little of both. Excuse me, can you tell me uh, where I might have a prescription filled? Why, yes, as a matter of fact, there's a very fine pharmacy not two blocks from here. Oh, but you'd best hurry, they'll be closing soon. I'll give you their address. Am I too late to have a prescription filled? You are, but come on in. Thank you. Chicago. They got a good museum in that town. Well, you come to a bad town for asthma. We got our own variety here. We even call it New Orleans asthma. Yeah, well, can you fill it? I can. I appreciate it. I can. Now, let me see. Where did I put that? Oh, damn it. I'll clean that up tomorrow. I'll just X that out. like a charm.
Couldn't you handle her without restraints? She's thrashing around so much we could barely hold her down. Take her up to psych. End room. Please stay close to suspense. I may need you. There's no need to be frightened. I'm a doctor here to help you. Don't you want to get those things off? There's no need to run. I'm not going to hurt you. There is nothing to be afraid of. You've nothing to be afraid of. Listen. Listen to me. Just listen. You're safe here. That's better. Now, if you promise that you'll be quiet, I'm going to let you up. Okay? Christ! Listen to me. Listen carefully. You're in a hospital. I'm a doctor. I want to help you. But I can't help you unless you help me. I'm going to leave you alone for a while. Till you get yourself together.
Let's try again, shall we? My name is Goddard. Phil Goddard. Marianne. What's your last name, Marianne? Whitman. What happened? I dreamed my husband died. Marianne, he is dead. <laughs> he was dead when you woke up, is that it? It was my fault. I threw the shroud over his head, it was full of dust. He was joking and couldn't breathe. Shroud? It was over the mirror. They were all there. Mr. Charbonnet, the perfume lady, the, the girl on the door, the... You're talking about a dream. No, I saw the dust. In your dream? Coming out of his nose. Tell me only what you remember from the time you woke up. I thought he was asleep. Absolutely not. He said it was very important. In a minute. I have to leave you for a while. If you need anything, just ask Mrs. Spence. Did you finish the autopsy? Mm hmm It's asthma. Yes. All right, let's go. Okay. I don't have a fever. Hospital rules. I'm not hungry. Well, you better eat something now. Would you tell Dr. Goddard I'd like to see him? All right. hospital is this? Well, what kind do you think it is? The doors are locked, the windows won't open, and they took the silverware off my tray. It's an ordinary hospital. This particular room is used for patients we think might hurt themselves. And there are no mirrors anywhere. Well, they say when a woman asks for a mirror, that's a good sign. You think I've been crazy, don't you? I think you've been through a hell of a lot. Well, what if I told you that it was after I woke up that I saw the dust coming out of his nose. There was no trace of any dust in the autopsy. Look, your husband died from complications resulting from an asthma attack. Any number of things could have triggered an allergic reaction. He did have a medical history of asthma, didn't he? Yes. I'm sorry, do you want to talk anymore? Do you need anything to help you sleep? I don't want to sleep. We'll try to get some rest. I'll come in again first thing in the morning.
you want something, Mrs. Whitman? I'd have breakfast with you this morning. I must look a fright. You look fine. You feeling better? Mm-hmm. I think we should get you out of here. Out? You gotta face the world sometime. What if I'm sick? You've suffered a terrible shock, and uh, I think the sooner you get out into the world again, the better. Oh, this is a man from the coroner's office. He has to ask you a few questions. It's a formality. Sorry to have to trouble you, Mrs. Whitman. Your husband did have asthma. Had he had any prior attacks during your stay? No. Do you have any reason to believe that death resulted from other than natural causes? No. And um, what do you want done with the deceased? His family has a plot in Elgin, Illinois. We'll make the arrangements, and you can travel back with him tomorrow. Will you sign here, please? night I think I saw someone from the hotel out the window do you have any friends here you could stay with I don't even have my clothes they're keeping them for her at the hotel they sent these aren't they lovely oh I can't go back to that hotel no of course not is there anybody anywhere we could call to come here and be with you? No. Would you let me find you a place for tonight? Away from this hospital? Are you certain she won't mind? Certain. She must be a very good friend. Very. Oh, damn it. I wanted to be out in front to greet you. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, you just caught me tidying up for your arrival. <laughs> Elaine, this is Marianne. Yes, I guess. Well, welcome. My house is yours. It's charming. Thank you. We really appreciate this, Elaine. You said that. Oh, listen, why don't you show uh, Marianne around? You know the layout, Doc. I think you'll be very comfortable sleeping on the daybed, Marianne. Hello? Yes, this is Elaine. Peter, hi, how are you, Mike? Oh, tonight. Listen, he's uh, trying to impress some client or something about the grandeur of his establishment. I know you don't want to go. You're right, we don't. I know, I know, but I just want him to think I'm making the old college try. Well, why don't you go, Helene? I'm off early tonight. I can stay with Marianne until you get back. Well, now, what kind of a hostess would that make me? Now, look, I, I will simply tell Peter that uh, we'll do it another time, that's all. You told me to go out in the world. Oh, now, wait a minute. Well, I think you were right. Let's go. She's right, I did. Okay. Well, good. I always like a party. Peter? Yeah, you're in luck. Uh. 
Why, hello. <laughs> sure goes out of his way to make us feel welcome. Don't worry, ma'am. His bark is worse than his bite. Come in. You do honor to my house, which was formerly of the old return. Well, look, he likes you. I've never seen you do that before. Stay, sir. There is God to gain. So I hope. Anything for a giggle, my dear. Life's hardly worth it otherwise. Nice having someone new in town. I'm so sick of the same old faces. Thanks awfully, Peter. Well, you know I didn't mean you, darling. I don't believe right it, Henry. Henry and John, let's how are you? Darling, you darling, good to see you. Hello, dear. I'm so glad you could bring your friend. Here we are. My specialty. Oh, uh, would you have a bourbon and soda? We have something here for every taste. Bartender, bourbon and soda, please. Here you are, sir. Thank you. Enjoy yourself, my dear. I'm going to mingle for a while, keep things stirred up. Helene, darling, come, help me out. Yes, I will. Are you glad you came? Yes. Is that punch any good? Very. Try some? No, <laughs> thanks. I'll take your word for it. I did that. Mm -hmm. It happens between the best of friends. We are friends, aren't we? Yes. Excuse me, can I borrow him j just for a second? Oh, I'll be right there, Helene. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Doc, listen, here is Tom. with you. You needn't explain. It's perfectly understandable. Oh, she is looking very good. You mean very bad, which is very good for us. <laughs> I'd like to know what she is thinking. Do you think she knows? Isn't it about time that we let her know? We're so lucky that Peter knew the doctor.
Doc, are you coming? In a minute. Do you want to talk about it? They were there. All of them. Who do you mean? Mr. Charbonnet, the lady at the perfume shop, the girl who took us on the tour. Well, none of them will bother you here. Helene's a good soul. She'll take good care of you. I'll stop by tonight on my way home and see how you are, and I'll plan to take you to the train in the morning. Okay? Sorry you let me out? No, I'm not sorry. I know it sounds crazy, It's but... not crazy. I can understand how a person with your sensibilities would have trouble sorting out what's real from some of the weird things that happen here in the quarter. I get some pretty strange vibrations myself sometimes. No, once you leave New Orleans, get away from here with so much has happened to you, you'll be all right again, I'm sure. Hey, Doc, you're going to be late. You're going to be just fine. I know it. There's just one thing. I don't understand what happened to that dog.
Well, see, what, what's going on? They're in there. They're in the mirror. They're where? They're in the mirror. They ripped the sheet trying to get out. Who ripped the sheet? Mary Ann, you're not they making were in sense. There. You see? You see, I wasn't imagining things. I wasn't dreaming. You might have ripped that, putting it no, on. No, I heard them. They were in there. Oh, Phil, maybe you better give her She's something to She's one of them. To... This perfume. It's the same perfume that they sold to me. They got her to invite me to the party. Then that mirror that she put... Then you ask her why she has that perfume. Marianne, why does any girl have perfume? You don't really mean that, do you? I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. Maybe I did dream it. I'm going to. I can't stay here. I'm going to go down to the station and wait for the train. Chewing gum? Do you have any cola? Yes, ma'am. Fifty cents, please. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like a soft drink, Marianne? Candy bars, chewing gum, soft drinks, sandwiches, candy bars, chewing gum. Change. 
Choro. Well, keep paging him. Oh, thank God I reached you. I'm in Hammond. Well, I had to get off the train. There were... He was on the train. Chet, he used to work for the hotel. He was sent by Mr. Charbonnet. They're out to get me. I know they are. OK, I'll calm down. I... Yes, I'm calm. It was him. I know it was him. Please come get me. And there are no taxis here. There's, there's no one here. Oh, please hurry. Yes. No, no, I, I won't go outside the station. I'll be waiting here. OK. Hurry, please. Look, I have to call someone. My car won't oh, start. Please, not here. Please. That damn dog came out of nowhere. If someone is after you, why would they want to torment you like this? Then why was the boy from the hotel on the train? Are you sure it was him? I'm sure. Okay, let's suppose it was him. What makes you think he was there because of you? 
He might have needed the job. He might have been fired from the hotel. Well, if he wasn't, will you believe me then? My dear Mrs. Whitman, I was told that you had left New Orleans. You must forgive my absence. This being Sunday, we find ourselves somewhat shorthanded. Where's Chet? He's not here, is he? What are you trying to do to me? Drive me out of my mind? Now, I know you're trying to do something to me, and I've come to find out why. You are, um, Phil Goddard. Ah, oh, yes, a, a doctor, are you not? Yes, sir, Mr. Chabonnet. Mrs. Whitman, was there something you wanted to say to Chet? Were you on a train this morning, Chet? This morning? I've never ridden on a train, sir. Marianne, 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 Marianne. It's all right, you don't have to say anything. Phil, look. This is it. I know it. This is the courtyard. Marianne, there are hundreds of courtyards like this in New Orleans. Some almost exactly like this. What do you want to do? Visit them all? To prove what? That you were here once before in a dream? Oh, don't do that. I... I have to question it like this. I know how you feel. Do you? I've even let myself forget that I'm your doctor. Have you? But you're remembering that I'm out of my mind. Is that it? Do you think I'd have gone through all this with you if I thought you were out of your mind? Well, don't make excuses for me. Just don't bother with me until I get these ideas out of my head. It would mean a lot to me if I thought you believed me, Philip. I do believe you. I think you should get some rest, and I'll run you to the airport as soon as I get back from the hospital. Do you think you'll be all right here? Yes, I'll be all right now. I'm not very sociable. Not many people know where I live. Well, it's only mirrors that frighten me. Okay, there's one in the bathroom, and I'm going to cover that right now. 
Oh, Philip, this is silly. I'm going to be all right. Nothing silly until you're feeling better. Till you get out of New Orleans and forget all this. I don't want anything to make you uneasy. You sure you don't want to come to the hospital with me and wait for me there? Yes, I'm sure. Okay. 